Hello all, this is another quick little video I didn't think I was going to do, but so many people are probably facing this, it is necessary. Does System D run under Windows 10? Now that the Windows subsystem for Linux has been released version 1.0 in the Microsoft Store. So, first of all, if you go WSL space minus minus update, you may or may not get any updates found. It might not even do anything. It tells me the most recent version of Windows 7. It's already blah, 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 blah. So if you feel you should be getting an update, and one of the ways you can tell is go WSL space minus minus version, and you should be on at least version 1.0.0.0. And you can see as you look down, there's a WSLG, right? So here I am on Windows 10, and I have WSLG, as I have demonstrated in prior videos with the googly eyes under X eyes. So you'll notice I no longer have VCX SRV running, yet if I open a terminal and I type Xis. There are the Xis. Notice they don't really follow me unless I'm over top of it. So, you know, there's security context, namespace, uh, application space sort of stuff going on here. And uh, not thrilled with Microsoft's implementation. They could have maybe made the pointer bigger. But as you can see, this is not the X serve. This is not the googly eyes we have become accustomed to because they don't really follow you. But nonetheless, here it is without a third party X server going on. So, but is it system D, right? So if I look here and I go, so we'll build it up. PS is, you know, what's running for your particular user. You can also ask for a particular. ID and here it is system D look at that but I uh, took some measures to make sure that would be the case and if you want it more short syntax you go PS hyphen O for formatting COMM and numeral one and then you just see system D or not system D so when I go back over here uh, I will open the standard PowerShell, right? This is a Microsoft PowerShell that I'm in. And we can, from here, say WSL uh, list, space minus minus list. And you can see I have an 18.04, but I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go WSL uh, unregister. And this is one of the most uh, scary things about this. This is why you want to make sure that all your versions, all your important work is... <laughs> Off container, such as it were. Ubuntu hyphen 18.04. And unregistering is deleting. They should have called that delete. Look, look how fast that happens. And if we do a WSL list again, it's gone. So I'll put one back on there now by going WSL space minus minus install space minus minus distribution. Uh, Ubuntu hyphen 18.04 and just a little reminder of how blazingly fast pulling down these LXD container images are so it's already pulled down I guess it keeps it in a cache somewhere so delete isn't fully delete but it gets rid of the registered one apparently and it keeps it in a cache until it's revs or something so anyway we give it the name Ubuntu and uh, I go with foo generally, all lowercase. Now we can just exit out of there because it's a terrible user interface for it. And we'll just bring up 18.04 over here. And we'll do the same PS, right? There's the PS program, PS hyphen uh, O com. PS hyphen O com one. Oh, that's a nit. That is not what we want. This is the default 
no system D, right? So if you type PS hyphen O com one, and it says init there, it's using the precursor to system D, system V, something that's been around for a long, long time, but requires much greater levels of ex expertise on the part of the user. So there's kind of a Linux revolution or evolution at minimum, it's an evolution going on uh, with a system D program so that you can easily write services and start and stop them with a programming language of your choice with lightweight config files blah 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 so we got to get that to change from init to system d and that's supposed to be possible now here without any third-party software people like me use distro d from github or other things so now all we're supposed to have to do is sudo vim uh, a file in etc called WSL conf, right? It's not going to be there initially. It's empty. And then you just do uh, square bracket boot, close square bracket. And on the next line, you say system D equals true. And this answers the question that's burning on my mind, and I'm sure on lots of people's minds, whether Windows 10 uh, WSL Windows subsystem for Linux under Windows 10 supports system D natively. So we can check that command again. Now I just added a config file. Unless there's some really auto config stuff going on, it will continue to say this. Now there's a few things we can do. We can do a light exiting and going back in and typing that command again. It's not enough, you see. So what we're going to do is we're going to close out of that and we are going to restart uh, or shut down WSL space minus minus shut down. And this is forcing a reboot of all the instances of Linux you have running on your Windows machine under WSL. All right. So now when you go back in, it's like it's booting from scratch. It'll probably take a little bit longer to come up. However, and this is the purpose of the video when we type this command in again aha we should see system d there and if you've upgraded properly for people who haven't been able to do this because they're not on a high enough version of wsl yet what you need to do is you need to go into your uh, settings and you need to update you need to accept the suggested microsoft uh, update that isn't forced upon you yet but is like an early preview you go ahead you accept that early preview of the next uh, update and then when you do WSL uh, update here you know it's a step you'll have to do after having done the uh, settings you know uh, update of Windows itself you then do an update of WSL in particular now you can confirm that you've done this correctly by, of all things, going into the Microsoft Store. It's nuts, but if you go into the Microsoft Store, you can now search on the Windows subsystem for Linux and see the fact that you have the Microsoft Store version of it installed. This is Windows subsystem. There it is, uh, suggested. It even has a logo now of the blue penguin. Take a look at that, right? And once it updates, you can see it says open. It doesn't say install. So that means this little thing I did over here with, um, with the update had worked. And I'm now on all the right versions. So now that you're on the right versions, when you create a new instance of Linux under WSL, you can put that command in sudo vim slash etc slash WSL conf and uh, this little command here and upon a full reboot uh, you will now have system D PS space hyphen O space COMM space one and you'll see that your first program your PID uh, one program which has a very special meaning in Linux world it's the first task that starts up and controls everything else in the boot process now is system d instead of the default init there you have it so 
I have got a little more reworking of my scripts to do because there's apparently a little bit of juggling in order to get system D and Windows graphics or Linux graphics under Windows working together well. You see I have system D here, but sudo apt install x11 apps. Now this will actually be interesting because you know uh, when I showed you X size earlier earlier that was on my Ubuntu 20.04 which I leave sitting there uninterrupted so that all my other experimental work is uh, separate from it is isolated but there do seem to be some problems ah there's X size now I have X size running at the same time as system D so I have some updating of my script to do, my LXD win, which I'll probably give it a new identity. You can let me know what you think. Um, I'm thinking that a new identity could be, uh, I could just rev Linux, make it Linux uh, 2.0 or something like that. So right now it's figlet. LXD win is what this whole project is called. It's not so memorable. It's very descriptive. It's even a double entendre joke in there, but it's not going to mean anything to anyone or it's not snappy enough. So I'm thinking as a possible alternative, just make it Levinix 2.0 and ride off of some of the popularity that Levinix already has, where I'm thinking of giving it some literal meaning like perhaps a, a nice strong identity uh, would be in getting on Linux you know uh, it's uh, get on Linux so I, I call it I would make the repo name called get on get on so it would be get on Linux very literal so let me know what you think uh, this video confirms system D natively with Windows subsystem for Linux now on Windows 10. It's very big. Do a little bit of refactoring, but now it's going to be very easy to package up these like little uh, Noah's Ark containers of uh, dev environments. Again, this is all because I like Linux containers as a development platform and as an alternative to Docker, which makes you jump through all these incredible hoops. Uh, this approach just lets you get a generic Linux system. You can do whatever you want with installs and you know you don't have to worry about this extra abstraction of compositing that, uh, that Docker has that makes everything much more difficult. So it might seem like I'm doing difficult jumping through hoop stuff, but this is the opening of the dam and Microsoft sure wants it uh, as much as <laughs> I do if they've just uh, done these little changes uh, to allow this uh, profound step forward, uh, giving us all System D under um, Windows Subsystem for Linux on Windows 10 without having to wait for it now on the developer track coming down forever. I thought it was going to be a forever wait. It's a holiday gift. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. And don't forget to tune back to see my updated and simplified scripts. It gets you uh, onto a little traveling dev platform, particularly good for SEO and things like it.